Hello and welcome to another Let's Play. Me, Game of Six of Dawn Chorus. Before we start, if you're interested in playing this game, it's available for free on itch.io. And if you want to support the people that make this game and or get the most up-to-date version, you can go to their Patreon. And I believe it's $5, but I really should look up these things before starting. Anyways, on the last Let's Play, we restarted the game with Lake's Root. And now we're going to pick Lake. Now, I wonder if it went through everybody here that would be like, no, 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 no. I know I'm your best friend and I just totes wants to be close to you, but no. But Lake Coon. Lake is studying astrophysics. He will surely know how to use it. I look around for him and there he is standing just one group away from me. Also, let's change the preferences for these things to make it slow again, ish. Weird, he's standing alone. I was sure he'd be with Jorgen. That's his name, Jorgen. He's looking through the telescope as I walk over to him and I tap him on the shoulder to get his attention. Let me reset my face. Hey, Lake. Oh, Dark, what's up? Doing fine with the assignment? Wait, you wouldn't be here if it was going well, right? Well, yeah, you're right. I opened up the sky map app, but I have no idea how to use it. I could have asked Professor Arnie, but I saw you were standing here alone and thought I'd asked you. <coughs> Ask. Ah, that's nice of you. You're going to want to do everything himself, so he went ahead and took a telescope for himself. And I was happy to do it do this myself too. It's a lot of fun. And how are you doing with it? Oh, I'm done already. I might, you know, I take astrophysics, so I'm actually pretty smart on how to use these things, you know? Anyways. <coughs> actually, give me a sec. There we go. If you want, you can take a look through the telescope, but I can go and help you with your own. Nah, it's fine. I mostly want to see Saturn myself. Rather, Un rather unlikely that I'll ever be using a telescope again in my life. Go ahead then. I lean in and look into the telescope. In the middle of the image, there's a rust-colored orb with a ring around it. I was expecting it to look like a flat image, but it looks very real and three-dimensional. I kind of want to actually now look at, like, uh, high-res images of, like, planets and maybe see if I could find open up one of the, my games of planets in VR you know besides Elite Dangerous do I'd have to assume they'd have the planets in there the planet casts a shadow on one side of the rings and there's a thin shadow of the ring on the planet itself too it's not too big but I see it very clearly okay that was something oh yeah I thought you'd like it quite yeah. Um, I wasn't really sure that the others found what the others found so interesting about stargazing, but seeing the planet up close, it's so much different than looking at photos. Hmm, I get you. It's indescribable, really. I gaze up at the sky, looking at all the blinking stars and planets. I feel much closer now, but also much more alien, alive, with their pulsating light. They're no longer just some shining dots and in the familiar sky. Now, the stars and planets with their moons and even distant galaxies. And there are so many of them. Link is looking at the night sky too. The stars are reflected in his bright eyes. I don't think I've ever seen him looking so wistful. The sky, the sky in the city is nowhere this nice. Sometimes I start reading a sentence and I, my brain's like, that doesn't make sense, reread it. And then, you know, when you read it all the way, it's like, that makes sense. Is that what you get, what you got you into astrophysics? Hmm? Oh, in a way, yeah. I've liked watching the stars since I was little. I'd often go a bit further from the town and stare at the sky above me. There was a lake that was not far from my house, 
I love coming there at night and sitting on the coast. The stars reflected in the water's surface seem to ripple and shimmer like a mirage. I get it. Sounds quite magical. And not quite unlike what I, what I was used to in middle school. I didn't really have an idea what I wanted to go for after I finished high school, but my physics teacher convinced me to go to university. Apparently, being an astrophysicist is a good way to travel a lot, and that's one thing I was sure about. I wanted to travel and see the world. You know how it is. That's just spending your whole childhood in a small town. All you want is to move somewhere where anything is happening. That's interesting. Like, I wouldn't think astrophysicists would travel a lot. Because, I mean, sky moves. You know? But I'd have to see me travel to... At least small towns. Because you could go to big cities, because, like... How are you going to see the stars? Well, maybe not everyone feels like that. A lot of my friends stayed behind. But you moved out as well. Yeah, I did. Same reasons. Never thought I'd end up in another country, though. I wonder how the tuition fees are for going to a different country, because going from one state to another, so much money. How are you two doing? You, do you need any help? We're fine, thank you, Professor. That's good to hear, Lake. I see you're helping your friend. That's nice of you. What's your name? Don't remember you from my classes. I'm Dark, Professor. We don't have any together. Good to have you here, Dark. I hope you're enjoying this lesson. If you will, if you will have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Professor Arnie smiles and walks away to the next group. Leave me alone with Lake. Okay, so we're done with this? So we're done with this. Do you want to find something else to look at? Well... Okay, that's the game's heartbeat going. I was like, is somebody knocking on my door? Well, there's something I want to ask you about, like... Do you want to be my husband, though? <laughs> yes. I go gladly. Okay, better get it over with. Wait, I think I know what you want to ask. It would be really nice to have you there with us, Dark. In our... Oh, yeah, he's sharing a room. I know I technically said we don't have the space for another person there. But we'll think of something. <sighs> That was more stressful than I thought it would be. But now all the tension felt dissipates as I exhale in relief, my breath turning into a white cloud between us in the cold air, which did make me think, all of a sudden now, if more Nazi didn't, you know, stop being produced, um, like I think it, they didn't finish, uh, surprisingly the tigers or the guy that invited you there, or, and the, um, I think, Lion and Labrador's route. Um, how would the Lion Labrador route go anyways? Because that's like a threesome kind of thing. I don't know. I'm rather right turning into a white, yeah. Thank you, Lake. You're really saving my life now. It'd be great to have you there. Really. Like, having a sleepover. Just none of us will be, will be a host. That went really well. I hoped he would say yes, but I never expected he'd be this excited about it. I hope Jorgen will be fine with it too. It'd be better to ask him too. It's his room as well, after all. Right. Almost forgot about him. Jorgen? Come here for a second. Yes? Can Dark stay with us tonight? Sure. He's not sleeping in my bed. Nice. We'll think of something. Oh, and we're per we're going to be sleeping early today. I want to get some rest before the early wake-up tomorrow. Sure, no issue to hear. Thank you. You won't regret it. Okay, looks like your time here is up. Thank you all for attending the lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe even gained a new passion. Uh, s supper is ready. Uh, already waiting for you in the cafeteria. Free to take it with you any day anywhere you like. Have a good night, everyone. Walk towards the guest house, joining the small uh, crowd of students 
heading to the cafeteria. I should get into a nice telescope sometime. This would be so much fun. Here, even without the, the night sky, here, even without the night sky, here is stunning. I don't understand that. Yeah, I enjoyed it more than I thought it would. Why did you sign up for it if you thought you wouldn't enjoy it? I was mostly curious how it would actually look. I had no idea what to expect. Is that what you normally do at the university? Not really. We're more often analyzing data from telescopes than looking through them. Not that it's less interesting. It's just more abstract. The cafeteria is already crowded when we enter, filled with buzzing voices of many animals of different species. Most of them are just queuing, around, queuing up for the table food, but some are already sitting around tables and eating. Are eating here, or do you want to go somewhere else? Hmm, I thought of eating in a room. There's enough space there, and it would be quieter. I second that. I like the quietness of a room. The queue is progressing fast, so in a few seconds, we're at the table with food already. Looks like each of us got an individual paper plate with two sandwiches and a slice of some cake. Small bottles of still water and are standing in rows next to plates. I guess as opposed to sparkling water? Each take one plate and a bottle and leave the cafeteria. Oh man, I can't believe the day is almost over. I had so much fun today. And I'm glad to have you here with me. Suddenly, Ray, Ray craps his arm around my shoulder, pulling me closer. He does the same with Jorgen. As I look over at the bat, he turns his head away. For a moment, I thought I saw him blushing, but that can't be true, right? And I'm glad you took me in. Thanks again, both of you. Oh, it's my pleasure. We left behind the buzz of the cafeteria and the only thing audible now our rhythmic footsteps on the thick carpet. Lights in the corridor are half-dimmed, given in the quiet, intimate feel, ooh-woo. I really like it here. One thing I really need to do is... Uh, Nick, or, you know, ask about and buy my sister's, um... Light, soft light things, you know, like those fake candles or something like that, I could really enjoy just having my room dark, but with just a low, dim light in it. Especially at night, you know? That would be feckin' awesome. Okay, let me open the door. And come on in. Oh yeah, I need to censor those titties. Maybe. It could always be m moobs, you know? The room here is just the same as the last time I've been here. Only now, there's a book lying on Jorgen's bed, and lamps are on. I'm not really sure where to sit, so I just walk up to the window, not to stand in the way. Oh, that's a new thing. So wait, you actually have wings? Huh. I wonder how they fit in... Oh, I guess you did have a poncho before. You didn't have, an, like, a long sleeve t-shirt. Huh. Sorry, I'm not being speciesist. What's your hair feel like? Apparently, that's a thing that people do with um, African American slash black people. They're like, we need to touch your hair. It's like, wait, people do that to them? Why? Anyways. Hey, Dark, don't stand there. Come sit down. Oh, right. We only have two chairs. Hmm. I have an idea. Bed. Jorgen, can you help me grab the one side? Sure, coming. Oh, now I see. Nick and Jorgen pull their, put their plates on the table and lift it, then move it between the two beds. Okay, now we can sit together. Both Lake and Jorgen sit down on their respective beds, and after a moment of hesitation, I put down my plate on the table and sit down next to Lake, whom I know better. Lake's arm presses up against mine as he extends it to grab a sandwich. His fur is soft and pleasant, like a pers like his personality. 
Oops, sorry. I took some instant ramen with me, in case we wouldn't get enough food, but it looks like enough. I finally take a better look at the food I've been given. Two rye bread sandwiches, topped with slices of some dark cheese and sprinkled with pepper. Simple, but so good. I need brunost, which is the brown cheese, especially considering I am already pretty hungry. A slice of apple cake is delicately browned on the edges and smelled faintly of cardamom and cinnamon. It's like, dude, stop butchering my language. Next to me, Lake stares at the cheese sandwiches with a look full of suspicion. Is this what I think it is? If you think it's Brunost, then yes. Yeah, Brunost. Oh, I know what it is, though I've never tried it during my four months of living here. It's especially sus supposedly a local delicacy, and I've seen it in stores, but somehow never felt like buying an ingredient I'm not familiar with. It looks like darker cheese, and is served in the same way, but it's a pretty different but it's a pretty different form of it. Is it bad? I've never had it before. I hate it. Try it, Dark. You might like it. I take a bite of the sandwich, not really knowing what to expect, but trying to stay open-minded. It's sweet, but savory, and salty too. Kinda nutty, ooh ooh, but it also has an aftertaste similar to caramel. Overall, not bad. Much different from cheese, though. I'm glad I got a heads up from Lake, though. If I'd expect the taste of cheese, I'd be pretty surprised. Hey, it's pretty good. Maybe I wouldn't eat it every day, but it's interesting. Whatever floats your boat, man. That was a weird just double change of thing. Like, eh, sad happy. It's apple cake. This apple cake is good, though. I wouldn't mind having another slice. Or two. Or four. I haven't finished my sandwich yet, but the pleasured look in Lake's face is enough to convince me to take a bite now. The sweet and tart flavor of ripe apples fills my mouth. Ooh, it's really good. The crust is perfectly baked and crumbles easily. And the hint of cinnamon enhances the flavor. Oh yeah, you're right. This is heavenly. Rugen looks at the two of us curiously, slowly munching around a sandwich. Guys, you know it's just food, right? You two look like you're having a simultaneous orgasm. What, can't you have a foodgasm, Jorgen? Mr. I drink people's pee? This is both funny and slightly unnerving. Uh, like, please tell me you're not doing anything to Dark right now. <coughs> What? I, uh... No! Jorgen, where did you even get that idea? Oh, calm down. I was just joking. I'm going to try the cake, that cake now. Maybe it is really this good and it'll blow me away. Ooh, woo. He grabs a slice and takes a small bite, chewing it for a while. Then, hmm, it's good. Which means it's really great com with his, uh, thing. And that's it? That's it. Then, can I have the rest? Jurgen sends his other paw across the table and gives Lake a bap on the snout. <laughs> I said it's good. I'm having the rest. Oh. Lake already finished his food, takes his phone from his pocket, and starts writing a message to someone. I turn towards Jorgen, not wanting to peek. Funny, this made me think of... Murakami. An easily noticeable feature of his writing is the way a character eats, and what they eat always says a lot about their personality. Huh. Looking at how you devoured your food, I'd be concerned about what uh, that would say about you. Maybe that I'm passionate and fierce, like a lion should be? Or that you're an inexcusable glutton. Uh, I don't know if the stargazing has put him in a good mood, or if it's simply the nighttime mellowing his temper. 
but Jorgen seems much more relaxed and approachable now than during the whole day. Or maybe it's because he feels more comfortable with me now. There's a certain gleam in his eye that I didn't notice before. Uh, you really know how to put me down, don't you? I know you can take it, and you know I'm just messing around. I wouldn't do the same to Dark here. I'd be fine. Don't worry. I can take some teasing. You seem quite a wholesome person, Dark. It wouldn't feel right. Unlike Lake, who is definitely not wholesome. Oh. I don't know if you meant that in a good way or a bad way. I'll be back in a moment. Gotta be unwholesome somewhere else. Lake stands up and leaves the room without any further elaboration. Oh. Well, that was sudden, although I'm quite like him. Where did he go, though? Your guess is as good as mine. Jorgen goes back to eating his food, and so I do the same. It's nice not having to cook for myself. Food made by others, for me, always tastes better, somehow. Maybe because when I make it myself, I see how much an experimental mess the whole cooking process is. We'll stay silent until we hear the loud thud in from the corridor. Ow! Fake? It's nothing. I just walked into the door frame. Why? Uh, ah. I turn around to see Lake walking in the room backwards, pulling a mattress. You need any help with that? Nah, it's fine. The hardest part is over anyway. Oh, that's an idea. Where'd you get this from? Travis had a free bed in his room. So, I asked him if he needs the mattress for the night. Travis, 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 Travis. Did, I don't think we dated him yet. Who the hell's Travis? He said I can do whatever with it, as long as I bring it back to unscratched before the end of the camp. Damn, you mean we can't have hardcore sex on it? That solves the problem. Where are we gonna put it? Um, between our beds to be best, I think? It would be... It would be in the way otherwise. Phew, I had no idea matches, matches were this heavy. I'll lean against it, against the wall for now. We'll move it together when you finish eating. And I'll go hit the shower for now. You two have fun. Have fun too, Lake. Lake grabs a fresh pair of underwear from the wardrobe and disappears in the bathroom, leaving us alone again. For a long moment, we sit, just observing each other in silence before Jorgen speaks up. Would you like something hot to drink, Dark? I'll be making myself some. Oh yeah, sure. I reply automatically, without even thinking. I don't really feel like having tea at this hour, but at least I'll have something to occupy my paws with. Jurgen stands up and walks to the cupboard where the kettle is. While he's preparing the drink, I take out my phone and check my messages. Hey, have you found a room tonight? Eco messages always have a proper pronunciation and capitalization, which is rare to see. Then I write to him, and I do the same. Otherwise, I'd feel crude. Yeah, I'm staying with the Lake and Jorgen. It takes a moment before Mika replies, but the way he composes his messages is no surprise. Oh, do you have three beds in the room? No, I'll tell you tomorrow. Okay, have a good sleep, Dark. You too. Ooh woo. It's kind of awkward and being like, I have a spare bed in my room, and I'm like, and me either being like, well, I'm rooming with this person that has one bed, but I'm sleeping in it, or this person that has two beds, but there's two people in the room, so we're, we kind of pulled in a mattress. You know, going the extra mile to not sleep with you. Here you are. You can come up to me with two cups and put them both down on the table. Hmm. Will you help me move the table? It will be more comfortable to sit in on the chairs. Oh, sure. I could have waited. I could have waited with the cups. I could have waited with the cups. Yeah, I don't know. 
I sit up and grab the other side of the table, this time helping Jorgen move it. He's a far bit smaller than Lake, and I have to carry the table lower and more carefully, especially with the cups of tea on it. That is kind of a question. Is it easier for the person on the other side if, if you carry it level, higher, or lower? No, no, no. We managed to spill some when I bumped the leg of the table at, at the bed, but thankfully, nothing got wet besides the tablecloth. Ah, 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 I hope it will come out. Probably not. I have to assume that means, oh, fuck. Eh, we got time. I don't know how long the scene is. Uh, means fuck. In what language? Uh, it's that one that's like blue and red with the white cross thingy. Uh, Fen? Is it Finnish? It's just in English. Injection? I don't know. Norwegian y. It will come out. Probably not. Wow, I didn't think I'd ever hear Jorgen cursing. Sorry, I didn't really see what I was doing. Don't worry, it's not your fault. It's mine for trusting you. If anything, it is mine for moving the table with cups full of tea on it. Not my brightest moment. Jürgen sits down in the chair, close to the window, and I take the other one, grabbing the cup and pulling closer. Um, what's this? Look inside the cup is raspberry, red, and smells more like an apple than a tea. It's hibiscus tea with some apple. It's nice to finish the day with some herbal tea, and I really like this one. It smells and looks beautifully. Hibiscus gives it a deep red uh, color. Nice, I've never drank it. You for sure tried it before, just unknowingly. It used to be the base for most fruits and fusions. Oh, hmm. It's the first time I've, ever, I've heard about it. It's possible my knowledge of teas and their types is fairly limited. Back at the uni, I mostly drink coffee. I lean into the cup and take a whiff of the aroma. It is indeed mostly apple, with a hint of cinnamon and a smell I don't recognize. I carefully take a sip, tasting sip. Ah, it's really tart. Oh, sorry. I might have brewed it for a bit too long. I like it intense, but if you don't like it, then a bit of sugar and some more water might help. Jorgen fetches the kettle with one paw and a sugar bowl with the other. He pours some more water into my cup, filling it, filling it almost to the brim. You know, I wonder... Tea packets... They should probably have a proper amount of, like, how much water you, how water you put with it, right? Sometimes I feel like when I make tea, especially with bigger cups, it just doesn't have as much flavor in it, you know? I put a spoonful of sugar in the tea and stir the full cup carefully, but not too much. I don't want to make any more stains on the tablecloth. After that, I take another sip, and this time, the tea tastes much better. It's still somewhat tart, but it's now fully notes, but now fully notes are do dominant, nicely enhanced by this slight sweetness. It's pleasantly calming, and overall very tasty, but it has a herbal tea, so it won't have and so it won't have any caffeine. Yeah, I see why you'd want to end your day with this. It's nice, isn't it? With a cup in his paws, Jurgen turns towards the window and looks out to the sky behind it, through the thick glass. The glint in his eye I saw before is still there. I think for a while for any topics I could talk about with him talk with him about but most of them seem to be too ordinary. Something I'd like, something like, so how did you enjoy your first day here? Or how was the ride? Don't work here. I picture, I can picture it clearly. Him turning towards me slowly with a disappointed look saying, really dark on his face. Um... I don't think he's much of a photographer, so let's ask about Othwells. You finally remember, I met him outside the guest house after lunch, when he was sitting with Travis and reading a book. 
Oh, right, and we kind of skip past the book thing. What about books you read? I mean, I remember you talking about Snow Sen outside today. At least I hope I remember that name right. Snortgard. It's not very well known outside Norway, so I'm not surprised you don't know him. I mentioned Mirror Rakami when, I, when we were eating. I like his books a lot. He's really great at capturing some indescribable essence in his books. Things that can't quite be stated directly. His style is so somewhat feminine, which I like. Also somewhat feminine. I don't even I don't understand what that means. But okay. If I'm not a fan of the female characters in his earlier books, even if I'm not a fan of the female characters in her books. Do you read too? Not very often, unless you count books on photography or university textbooks. I sometimes read a book when I'm riding on, on train or bus. I always have a few ebooks downloaded on my phone. I watch movies more often, mostly because it takes away less time. A book that would take me a few days, I would read often, gets compressed to a two hour film. Sorry, my mind kind of just jumped somewhere else for a sec. True. But don't you think there's something lost in that translation? Perhaps. But I do not mean to come off as a snob or anything. I watch films too. But I enjoy visualizing the story in my head and reading it. At, it's at my tempo. Hmm. I like that about books too. Jorgen doesn't say anything more after that. And he falls silent. But it's not uncomfortable kind of silence. Quite the contrary, I feel really relaxed and at ease with him. I sip the tea slowly, as it's still piping hot, and I look out the window together with Jorgen. The silence is un undisturbed, cushioned only by the running water behind the bathroom door. Not a bad way to spend the evening, actually. Oh, I think we could try and get going. Like maybe put this at it could go to an hour long thing I don't think it would be too long anyways hey did I miss anything the door opens suddenly and Link comes out of the bathroom in a small cloud of steam wearing only a pair of boxers I was in the sauna with him already but that is completely different context now I'm in his room though and he's sitting right in front of me almost fully naked not really I made hibiscus tea though your cup is next to the kettle oh great Thanks. Link grabs a cup and walks to the window, looking outside. His mane looks extra puffy, uh, fluffy after the shower, like a little frozen waterfall around his head. The moon is really nice tonight. It would be so cool to see it up close someday. And then look back at Earth. I wonder how it'd look. Would it also sometimes be bright and clear and dark on the other days? So, what I could, so that I could walk up to the window, look outside, and say, the earth looks really nice today. <laughs> That'd be cool as hell. It would be. Do you think we're ever going to colonize the moon? I'm sure he will. It's only a matter of if it will happen during our lifetime. I hope so. It'd be the first, I'd be the first one to move there. Anyway, I'll go take a shower now. Frankly, I'm feeling pretty sleepy already. I blame that on the earlier sunset, early sunset here. Ergen stands up and walks over to the bathroom and left alone with Lake. Damn, I thought this was going to be a, a shorter thing, but nah, I probably should have thought of that. The lion turns around and looks at me with his bright eyes. He's nice, isn't he? It takes me a moment to understand what he's talking about, that he's talking about Jorgen and not the moon. Now that I got to know him a bit better, yes. I know he seems a bit rough around the edges at first. He just takes some time to warm up to new people. I can tell that he likes you. I can still hear you. An annoyed, muffled voice comes from the bathroom. Oh, right. The bathroom isn't exactly soundproof. Sorry, Jorgen. I stand up, walking over to the lake, standing next to him and leaning on the windowsill, looking out. Would you be scared to go there? To the moon, I mean. Of course I would be. But it doesn't mean I wouldn't. 
I think it only makes it more exciting. Imagine leaving everything you have, everything you know behind, not knowing if you'll ever come back. Someday, you're going to have to leave everything you have behind anyway, and it's not up to you to decide when. And didn't we kind of have to do the same when you moved here? Only it was much less exciting, and going back is easier. Whatever you do, there's always some risk involved, even when you're not in your garden planting tomatoes or whatever. I need to check. I want to auto check this though. Any given moment, you can just go. Pfft. Wouldn't you prefer to do something exciting and interesting before that? Yeah, I do definitely know that thing. I didn't expect the conversation to go in such a direction, so I don't really know what to say. Hey, there, there's that picture. Before I can really think of anything, I feel Lake's arm brushing against mine, lightly, before he puts an arm around my waist and rests his head on my shoulder. His gaze is fixed on the moon, reflecting bright in his wide, open eyes. For a moment, I went to extend my paw to pet him, but I saw myself simply staying motionless and letting him cling to me. For some reason, I feel like this is what he needs. So, I keep still, as if there was a solid tree offering shelter. As if I was a solid tree offering shelter. I can only guess what he's thinking about, behind those dreamy eyes. But I can't shake off the feeling that he's very, very lonely right now. So lonely, my heart aches when I look at him. We stay like that for a long time, until Jorgen returns to the bathroom, from... I don't turn around, but I can hear him getting onto the bed, maybe grabbing a book or his phone, or maybe looking at us, puzzled. Either way, he doesn't say anything. Hmm, you are again. I mean, sorry, Lake. After a minute or two more, Lake finally lets go of me, rubbing his eyes with one paw. Thank you, Dark. Your turn for a shower now. I know, I know, I'm going. I'm a musky husky. Whoa, it's really late already. I gave Lake a soft pat before fetching the bathroom kit from my camera bag and going to the bathroom. Oh wait, Lake, do you have a spare towel in the bathroom? Hmm, I don't know. We each got only one big towel, but we didn't use the paw towel yet. It's quite sizable, but if you think it'll be too small, you can try asking for one for at the reception. Thanks. It should be enough for uh, enough for one use. I first brushed my teeth, paying special can attention to my lung canines. I'm glad they have a kit with a toothbrush designed for a phenolinate. Those bigger, wider, universal ones are sometimes painful to use. When I undress myself down my boxers, pulling all of my clothes on the toilet, putting all of my clothes on the toilet lid, first making sure that it's clean, and look at myself in the mirror. Whoa, whoa. Mine's still occupied by a lake, and how he clung to me just moments before. It felt like he really needed warmth of another person, but why? I kept silent the whole time. He was snuggling up to me, simply wanting to comfort him. But maybe I should. Ask him about that later. Damn it, feelings. I prefer for the two of us to be alone for that, so. I carefully inspect my face, looking for anything unfamiliar, but I look the same as ever. My eyes are somewhat bloodshot, but I can blame that on the early wake up. My fangs aren't as long and pointy as Lake's, but I don't have a mane like him, and I don't have a mane like him. I like my stripes, though. I don't think I'd trade them for a mane. Yeah, I think that would also be kind of, like, bad with moisture. Overall, I'm not that different from him. Like most of the big cats, tigers and lions are quite similar species. Similar enough that they can produce offspring together. Ooh, woo. Well, <laughs> come on, let me actually read that. Well, obviously, I... I couldn't make offspring with, like... But, wait, what the hell am I even thinking about? 
Even though I'm alone here, I blush involuntarily. But maybe, maybe, I could be someone more to like. Someone more than a friend. Maybe. My reflection stares back at me intensely. My heart is pounding my chest so hard that I can start, they start feeling lightheaded. Gripping on the edges of the sink. Take a deep breath, and then another, and another, each longer than the previous one, until I'm feeling, and back to feeling okay again. Shaking these thoughts off, I take, shaking these thoughts off, taking my boxes off, then them fall to the ground. I shouldn't stay here too long, doing nothing, or Lake and Jorgen will start wondering what the hell I'm doing here, like jerking it. I got the shampoo and conditioner from the bathroom kit and hop in the shower. The water is warm and pleasant. Wasting no time, I open the shampoo and start rubbing into my full woe, starting with my head. Getting into the bus this morning, I never would have guessed this day would have ended this way. I thought I would maybe talk about it with the others during the meals, and then walk around taking some photos outside, maybe spend some time with Miko, then go to my room and read for a while before going to sleep alone. But now, I'm even about to sleep next to both Lake and Jorgen, even though I didn't even know uh, w one of them this morning. And Lake? We talk sometimes, but we were never this close before. Maybe I'm overthinking it? Maybe I just happened to be around, and he needed somebody, just anyone, to comfort him. Him? He has Jorgen here too, though, and I'm pretty sure they're better friends than I am, am with him. I can still feel his fuzzy head leaning onto my shoulder, and his warm paw holding onto my waist, and I hope to never forget that sensation. In any case, I feel like they both invited me to the world, and I'm grateful for that. I don't know if it's the tea that Jorgen gave me or something else, but I feel somewhat lightheaded continue with the relaxing ritual until I'm all clean. Then, I open the conditioner and apply it generously, brushing into my wet foe. It's unbranded, but it smells nice. Now I smell nice too. Finally, I rinse my whole body again, and turn off the water. I step out of the shower and dry myself with a fresh towel. I'm finished in a few minutes, but less modern technology for those thick, super absorbing towels. And only now I realize something. I don't have any clean clothes, so I need to put on the same ones from today. I wish I had a fresh pair of boxers. At least, I didn't sweat that much today, and already took one shower, so it could be worse. I checked the t-shirt, but it doesn't smell of anything yet. Wearing only boxers and my t-shirt for modesty, I open the door and stop out of the bathroom. Hey, Dark. Both Lake and Jorgen are sitting on their beds and playing with their phones. The mattress Lake brought for me is waiting for you between their beds, already complete with bedding. The air is, air is cold within the bathroom, but still comfortable. Apparently, the three of us are hot enough to warm the room pretty well. Hey, thanks for making the bed for me. You didn't have to. I could have done it myself. No problem. I didn't really have anything else to do. If you really can, uh, if you already, then can you turn off the light? Uh, here you go, bit myself. Sorry. Reading stuff makes me on for some reason. Jump in. We're all done. For example, read time strategies make me sneeze for some reason. Joking. Oh, one thing actually. Do you happen to have a spare phone charger? If you have a standard port, then I have a spare cable and a charger that can charge up to three phones at once. Sometimes it proves itself useful. Great. Thank you, Organ. Sorry, I'm using the two of you like this. If I had a choice... But you don't, and it's not a problem. I'm only happy to have you here, Dark. I drop the rest of my clothes on the chair. It doesn't look very elegant, but what else can I do with them? Not the bathroom kit in the bathroom, as I will be using it tomorrow morning. So the only thing left to do is to take out my phone from my trousers and plug it in. After that, I turn off the light and get into bed Get into the bed and let a lake bed made for me. Sorry, I think I just lost my ability to read. Balls. 
<laughs> Carve myself up to my neck. Hmm, another CG. It matches so well, not really CG, I guess. It matches itself. It's not too soft and not too hard, but it's a bit weird sleeping on the floor, as it can feel the hard wooden panels beneath the softness. I'm not going to complain, though. I'm grateful they took me in. Good night, and thanks again. Night, Dark, and night, Jorgen. Sleep well. Or else. Did you set the alarm, Jorgen? I kind of forgot to. Yes, I did. Don't worry. I'm going to wake up. Wake up, even if you, I had to kick you out of bed. Good. I probably, I'll probably need that. Um, I think I still have the alarms set since yesterday. What time is it set for? Well, it should be, it should start ringing soon. Um, better turn it off then. So, wait, hold the phone. So wait, you got it. You guys got up around like I don't know midnight to go on a. Wow. That would suck. No wonder you slept on the bus. Take my phone. I take my phone and open up the alarm, but it turns out that this time I didn't set the alarm to reoccurring. Okay, crisis averted. It's silence again, for a moment before Lake speaks again. I wonder, how would it feel to be a different animal? What? Why? I mean, that was really sudden. What's the context here? I was just thinking about some stuff. Looking at the moon, I thought about how we're only get one shot at this life. Jesus, like, you're being really just deep in shit. Don't you think it's pretty unfair? There's so much I want to do and see. And if I don't cram it all in in short life, feeling life, I'll never, never get another chance to do it. So, I was thinking about reincarnation. It feels that would be much fairer than just, you know, not existing. You both stay silent for some time, so after a pause, Lake just continues. The universe should be fair, so I think that it's logical conclusion. And I really like the idea. Not only do you get another chance, but also, whatever good or bad you did in your life actually matters. And according to that, the next life you get is better or worse. The idea is tempting, I have to admit. How would it work? How would it work, though? There would either have to be a limited number of souls, or an, the new one would have to be created whenever there was more living creatures than souls available. And then there would there'd be not enough bodies that what would happen to the souls wouldn't be reincarnated. Those are just technical problems. If you can't remember your previous life, would you really would that really be you? What what would really constitute you then? Just the consciousness? Or who you are are your character, your wants, your accomplishments, what you own and what you know? Where would you put the boundary of a person? Would you still be you if you had no recollection of the past whatsoever? Would your previous life still matter in that case? Or would you even would you be unfairly punished or rewarded for actions of someone you can't even remember nor relate to in any way? I don't know, frankly. I guess that was as long as I would still have my consciousness, then I'd be happy. Consciousness can be switched on and off, like a switch, with a few electrodes, or something as simple as fainting. You know, it's just nice, existing. I like existing. When you think that everything around you and yourself would disappear, and it would stay like that forever. Life is rough, sometimes, but there are things I enjoy, and friends I want to keep close, and I don't want to have to let go of it someday. I think it would be harder to find some purpose in life if you just kept on living forever. And living one life after another, that sounds like Sisyphus's toil to me. Jesus Christ, guys, you guys got really philosophical. Just want to sleep. Living the best life you can isn't very good goal when you can't learn 
from experience you gained from previous lives. I don't know. Maybe there's some higher purpose, and we just will and we'll never just know until the end. We don't know that though, and I think it's better to find your own purpose in life then. Or better. I'm sorry, it's a long episode. Except the possibility that there is simply no such thing. Personally, I believe that there's an error to think that there is no predetermined purpose in life, and there is no meaning to life at all. I'd rather choose to think of life as a gift and a purpose, and meaning that in it is for us to create. Maybe. Maybe I should just enjoy the ride while it lasts. Be thankful. I got to PR at all, and here at all, and all that. But it's not easy. I don't think this sense of finality that permeates everything. If there's no meaning in in all this, then why are we even here? Meaning, it's exactly where you put it, and it makes it no less real. Some people find it quite find it in quiet family life. Others, in fighting for a better tomorrow. Some in making art for themselves or others, and some are simply content to explore whatever art has been produced. In that way, we don't really find whatever meaning is we make it. Are you feeling better now? Not really. <laughs> I haven't had an existential crisis here. A bit, yeah. Thank you. My head hurts. Not just because I'm reading a whole bunch. I think now might be a good time to call it. Alright, let's continue today too. It should be close. Consciousness comes and goes in waves. I can feel something warm and pulsing just at the edge of my thoughts. But as I try to grasp it, it dissipates. Where am I? The moon is illuminating the room with a silver glow. The shadows that cast on the wall seem to move, mingling and morphing. A dark figure walks across the room quietly, a maimed one. It shoots me a quick look before continuing to the door. I try to comprehend what I'm seeing, but another dream washes over my mind, like a wave pulling me back into the formless sea. Okay, now we do it. Woof. I'm, I, I mean, I'm glad they did an extended episode for, like, this. Because sometimes it's good to be extended episode, especially when you're doing a new thing. But it's also like, dude, A, it's a long episode. And B, I'm kind of running low on reedy juice. So, anyways, that's going to be the end of this. Let's play so comment. Because I like comments. Sometimes you like, dislike, tips, as always. If you like my YouTube and likes you grow, then please subscribe and check out our videos to help it grow. And please remember to be new and must have control of the population. And if you want to play this game, it's IO. And if you want to get the most up to date version and or support them, go to their Patreon. Let's actually look at it. I want to check. Damn it. It's like, you mean Don Course Music? It's like, the, by the birds or something like that? It's like, no, I'm talking about... Also, do they have a Twitter? I do. <laughs> I'm talking about the game. Yeah, okay, I'm following it. Nice. And let's see, the membership I have is $3. Okay, it's 3 Anyways, until next time. Oh, no, let's play by me, Tired Wolf 6 of uh, Don Chorus. So thanks and see you.